Fire the Rick Eruption, I'm Dan Chest. Happy Valentine's Day. Fire the Rick Eruption, I'm Jared Ware. Happy Valentine's Day. Nothing better. Valentine's Day, maybe pull up with your Valentine or whatever, watching PTR. Exactly. It, what about what, what kind of We've Valentine's said that for everything. <laughs> yeah. Blizzard, watch PTR. Yeah. Regular day, watch PTR. Okay. Valentine's Day, Olympics, watch Olympics, PTR. Watch PTR. Yeah, just watch PTR. It's perfect for every situation. Yeah, yeah. Ten topics today. Let's get right into our first one. We're going to need Sam Allen in the background, our director, to read these puppies off. It's What's spring. The excitement level for spring training. <laughs> I'm going to let you go first with All this right, one. All right, are we going 1 to 10 here? Yes. All right, 1 to yeah. 10, I'm going 3. Okay. Red Sox are my favorite team. They didn't do anything exciting okay. to get me excited for spring training. Yep. No, nobody good yep. they got in free agent class. They were bottom team in the division last year. Yep. They got a new manager. Yep. I guess that's something that's good. Yep. But there's really nothing going on this spring that I, I can look forward to. Except, you know what I am looking forward to? And I'm pro I might be the only one on this campus. The World Baseball Classic. Okay. And I'm looking forward to that. Not just that, I'm not, I'm not counting very that, few people are getting I'm excited not, for I'm me. not counting that, though, because yep. we'll probably have a World Baseball Classic topic down the line. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's still like two months till the season starts, it seems like. So wake me up when the season starts. Right now, I don't care. I mean, Clay Buckholtz hurt his hammy the other day. Yeah. That's big news. Probably will miss his first start, even though they'll probably say he'll be back in two days. Yeah. He'll miss his first start because... He tore his hammy or something. Yeah, I'm going to go scale 1 to 10, like a 1. Maybe if can, if I could go sub 1, I would go sub 1. Could care less. Spring training, not interesting to me at all. The baseball season in general is not interesting. It's hard to – I've been – I've said on the show many times, not a baseball guy, don't love the baseball season in general. So spring training isn't really my cup of tea, you know. It is it is what it is. Some well, people get excited for it. The, the you Red really Sox just get you blow it out of the water. Yeah, it's you know, it, it, typical Red Sox fashion. Like, let's build a new stadium. Yeah, where I mean, we have the exact dimensions of Fenway Park, and then you look at the Green Monster, and you're like, that isn't what I think the Green Monster looks yeah. like. They got those seats on the inside with a net. Yeah, where it's the wall is. It's pretty. It's all pretty poor. Not a huge fan of spring. They training. charge a ton for those. Gonna tickets, give it a one. Way, Gonna give it a one out of ten. I, if I could go less than one, it would be in that, in that area. Have you ever been to spring training? No, I haven't either. Topic number two. Do you want to see Barry behind bars? So Barry Bonds facing some federal charges. You want to see uh, Barry go to prison? Do I? Would it make my life better if he was in prison? It wouldn't really change my life yeah. at all. But would I mind seeing him in prison? Why not? Yeah. You know, all these all these famous people. You know, Oscar Pistorius I think is going to prison. Yeah, he's in some trouble. Yeah. That broke this morning, or that would have probably been a topic. Yes, that that definitely would have been. But these guys like Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens, you know, we know it's like, oh, he's going to be going to prison. That's like the first thing you hear. And yeah. you're like, oh, maybe he will be. All right, I actually enjoy that. And then, like, down the road in the trial, he's not. Barry Bonds, ah, I would like to see him go to prison just because, you know, he took steroids. Yeah. He's the home run king. And it's just like, hey, buddy, enjoy not being in the Hall of Fame in three years. Yeah, I don't really wish prison on anyone, so I don't really... Yeah, I, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't make me my life I mean, any worse yeah, no, or it, better. It doesn't affect he, my life either way. And so in that case, I would say I don't really want to see him go to prison, obviously. Like I said, like obviously if someone deserves to go to prison, yeah, I'm fine with that, go to prison. But Bonds, not really. So I would say no prison, I'm fine with that. But, you know, obviously some of the, uh, some of the obviously Hall of Fame, you can make the debate. I've said many times in the show, I really don't care if you did steroids or not. If, if they should let you in the Hall of Fame or not, that shouldn't come into the decision, in my opinion. But that's think, just me. Do you think steroids are American or un-American? Uh, I would say they're pretty American. They're totally American. Yeah, I would say they're Have pretty American. Have you ever seen the documentary Bigger, Stronger, Faster? No. Uh, you should watch it. They got Joe Biden at the baseball congressional hearing saying that there's simply something un-American about steroids. Yeah, I'm like, I don't agree with that. That is so not true. Yeah. Topic Anyways. number three. Your spring, your spring training home, Florida or Arizona? So warehouse, you get two destinations for your spring training. You can either go yep. Grapefruit League or Cactus League. A lot of teams now going to the Cactus League. If you had to pick where you would rather spend your spring, yep. what's it going to be? This comes down to geography. Do I want to be in Florida or do I want to be in Arizona? And let's talk about Arizona. Some great golf courses. So is Phoenix Florida. Is great. No, no, well, let me get to both okay. before, you, before you jump in there. I got you. The, I got you. Arizona, drier. Nicer. Yeah, you're rattlesnakes in Arizona, but not that bad. Florida, 
you got alligators. You got snakes that are like 25 feet long that <laughs> the, eat the like inbred snakes that, that nobody can deers control. That is going to destroy the Florida population in like 10 years. They're going to be out of control down there. Whoever brought in the first Burmese python in Florida is an idiot. I mean, we're just going to have to cut Florida off the mainland and ship them out to sea with all those snakes. It's going to be awful. Terrible. So I would never, under any circumstance, want to willingly go to Florida. Outside of, like, Orlando. But any other place outside of, outside of Orlando, I'm not going to Florida. It's awful. Gators, snakes, no thanks. Arizona, I'll take my chances with a few rattlesnakes. Other than that, maybe there's scorpions in Arizona. There probably there is. There are. But I'm going to Arizona. Yeah, uh, something about Florida just does not appease me at all. Yeah. Like, everyone's like, oh, I'm going to Florida. And you can get Have fun. I don't want to be there. There's weird. Arizona. Weird. Florida's the weird. Hand. Yeah, Florida's like, weird. Oh, what's so great about Florida? Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, Arizona, you know, you got the good weather. You know, yeah. you got these new, nice new facilities in Arizona compared to the ones in Florida, which yeah. are, besides the Red Sox one, a lot of them are older and not as at not as nice whereas in Arizona you got these huge complexes sometimes you got to share them with other teams which yeah. I'm not a huge fan of but you know something about Arizona just gets gets yeah, me going I think you gotta go Florida zona. on the other hand turns me off I think you got to go zona Cali's right there so there's a lot of there's a lot of that going on in Vegas Arizona. you know maybe you'd road trip it to Vegas Florida, on a day off oof. not not much going on in Florida there's plenty to do in Florida no well, obviously well, there's plenty to do anywhere but not a lot of good stuff yeah okay you can go, go on some cool hikes in uh, in Arizona. Can't, yeah, can't really nope, go on nope, cool hikes nope, in Florida. That's true. Very true. All right. Next topic, Sam. Should BSC, BCS schools continue to play FCS schools in football? So we had Wisconsin athletic director slash interim head coach Barry yep. Alvarez yep. slash ex-coach yep. come out and say, no Big Ten teams are going to be playing any FCS teams. If you don't know what an FCS team is, it's your Rhode Islands. It's your New Hampshire's. It's the Football Delaways. champion subdivision. Any team that plays in the actual D1 playoff AA. tournament. Let's, let's call it D1AA. No, oh, let's call it Football Championship I, subdivision. I, I don't let's, like the Football Championship well, subdivision. Well, I, I do because that's the title it yeah, is. Yeah, but nobody football calls D1A subdivision. the Football Bowl subdivision. It's just... No, I, it's that's just, the name. Football Bowl subdivision. I know subdivision. it's that's the name, the name but it's it. stupid. Yeah, but that's still the name regardless. Yeah, I like D1A and D1AA. No, those are obsolete. Uh, that's what they used that's to like, call them, and that's what almost every American yeah, well, calls. Yeah, well, we used to call we used to call a lot of things now different names. Who cares? Use the name that it is now. D one double A. That's like four syllables. I'm not. I didn't count them. Football FCS. bowl. So, uh, football bowl subdivision. Nobody's gonna remember that. Everybody remembers that. No, football I guarantee bowl you. Football subdivision. I football guarantee championship. P- I, they, they haven't used one double A and one A in like seven years. No, yeah. Obviously, no one's gonna remember those. I'm pretty sure that's what people recognize now is those. I can and guarantee you, if nobody cares about football soul, uh, subdivision, bowl subdivision, and football championship. I can tell. No, I, I bet. I bet half the football fans don't know what those acronyms I, mean. I, and another right, half, you, you have to half be a bonehead. That, you have to be a blockhead if you don't know those. And another half of that probably doesn't know. What a what championship is. is. <laughs> they probably, probably don't know. Who, they probably don't know what team is in which one. Yes. You, what, what are you talking about? Football bowl subdivision. Any team that plays in a bowl. Yeah. Any team that could play in a bowl, all the, the big one. That's the big school, the big school one. Everyone knows no, that. Nobody would know that. Nobody. People would probably think it's a championship one. It's like, oh, Alabama. Why would, the they, why would they? Why are the championship division? Why would they? That's not. That's the bowl, though. It's a in the. BCS. I understand how it works, but I think D one double A. If you if you read if you read football bowl subdivision and you think the BCS national championship is what they're talking all right, about, all right, all right, I, or, all right. the, or every the story of the last like seven years since it's happened. When they say football bowl subdivision, they have to put in parentheses formerly D one A because nobody knows what they're talking I, about. I disagree with that. I haven't seen D one A used. I've seen in it in every years. story. I don't know what stories you're reading, man. Well, I'm reading stories on the internet. I'm reading them in the yeah, newspaper. Well, not the right ones. Where you read you stories. All right. So, anyways. So the FCS schools, no, they're not playing the Big Ten anymore. Obviously, we saw FCS App State a few years ago beat Michigan in the Big House when Michigan was in the top ten. Northern Iowa would be game. Iowa. Uh, yeah, but that's that's all right. It's uh, still a BC. Well, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. But, so the Big Ten, they're done. They're done playing FCS schools, which is a great move because the Big Ten's not good anyways. It really won't matter. They'll end up losing the game that they pick up more than likely most of the teams on these schedules. So it is what it is. It's, it's going to help the Big, Ten's, uh, Big Ten in the polls because it'll look better. Their resumes will look better. I don't really care. The Big Ten, fine. You can do whatever you want, but you're still going to be pretty awful. I want to see the SEC not play FCS schools anymore because they play more FCS schools than anyone. You have Alabama playing North Alabama week 12, or not week 12, but like week 
eight, nine, ten, which they should be playing a football bowl subdivision school like everyone else is. So, as SEC schools, if you're going to be the best, stop playing FCS schools because obviously you're going to win by forty points, even if you're the worst team in the SEC. You're still going to beat a championship subdivision school. Yeah, the BCS schools should stop playing these FCS schools. Yeah. Not only does it not like help them bowl eligibility wise. First of all, you, can, you should get six wins to begin with, and if you get six and one of them was against the football yep. championship, uh, football bowl, a D one double A school. I don't know what that is. Yeah, if you get one of those wins against a D one double A school, you're not bowl eligible if you get six wins. So why even play them? I mean, I guess you can get another win, which looks okay, and you have to give them a ton of money to come and play and get spanked yep. by you. Well, hopefully spanked. Hopefully you don't yep. lose to them because then everyone will make fun of your program for the next couple of years. So yeah, uh, especially like you said, the SEC schools they should stop doing yeah. that because every every one of these schools, yeah. like Georgia plays Georgia Southern or something, yeah. which Georgia Southern in D one AA standards is a good school. Yeah. But when they play a, a big time SEC school, so they're going to get killed. North Alabama is usually top five. So yeah, so get rid of all those games. I mean, the Big East can keep playing the FCS schools. Who cares about Big East? Yeah. Football now. Yeah. So, it's, but all the other big conferences, the Power Five, is that what they're called? Uh, I've never heard that. Oh, no. I thought I, I thought I read that. I yeah, whoever, read yeah, someone may use that. I've never heard that. <laughs> okay, yeah. They they, they got to stop playing these schools. AQ. AQ is what I usually call the big ones. Okay. Automatic qualifiers. Yeah, I don't like that one. I don't like that. Well, that's you what, can every, keep saying that's it, what everyone... I understand the concept. But all the people on ESPN say... I don't know... No one Do says you power need to five. go along with everyone? No one says power five. <laughs> no one says power play. Like, no I, one I says it. I seen no that one says it. Could have sworn I yeah, seen that before. Yeah, but you could like it could have been a one time like a one off thing calling it that. Yeah, it was definitely during the last college football season. Well, the Big East just kept keeps getting worse and worse. So. Yeah. UEFA Champions League champ. That's UEFA. Yeah. That's the acronym for UEFA, and yep. uh, the Champions League round of sixteen started this week. Yeah. Warehouse. If you have to pick a team that's going to win it. Who are you going with? Uh, poof. this is tough. I'm probably going with Barcelona. They've only lost one game in the league. Of obviously one of the best teams in the world. They don't play until next week. Teams like PSG are in it. Manchester United, one-one draw against Real Madrid. I think Madrid's going to end up winning that tie in the end because Man United's defense is pretty bad. I've seen them play a few times this year. Not a great back four. So I think they're out of it though. They can score with just about anyone in the competition. But when it comes down to it, you got to play defense. So. I, I'm going to go with Barcelona, uh, PSG without Zlatan Ibrahimovic. There could be up to three games, so I think that rules them out of it. He's pretty much their only scoring threat. on the, Not the only one, but their big scoring threat on that team. Uh, just looking at Madrid, obviously will be in it. Bayern Munich last year yep. in the final. They could be in it. They're a pretty good team. They're dominating the Bundesliga right now. So, But I'll go, I'll go Barcelona. Conservative pick, but pretty solid. Yeah, I'm going conservative with you. I, I don't know who else to pick, Barcelona. Yeah. See, this is what my... They've been thing, dominant. This is the thing I don't like about the UEFA Champions League. You get the group stage. Yep. You get A, B, C, all the way down to H. So there's eight yep. groups. Yep. I say the winner of that group, just make it a knockout stage round, just like the FIFA World Cup. So the top seed in A plays the second seed in B. You know yep. what I'm saying? And just keep going down like that instead of reseeding after every round. Because you know what happens? You know, you know how it works? I don't, I don't know if you have... No, I, I got it. I don't uh, know how it explain works. how. Explain okay, how well, you think the round works. of sixteen goes. The one seeds are on one side of the pot, and the two seeds are on the other, and they randomly draw who's playing who. Oh, it doesn't yeah, yeah. matter what group you're from. Yeah. I say keep the groups. The top seed in A plays the two and B. The winner of that will play the one and C, and the winner of the one and C and What's, the two and D. I don't see like where the no why because it's better. When it goes, no, 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 no. I don't it, see why it's better though. Because this is why it's better. Because after this round. They put the top four teams, so you're going to get Barcelona, Madrid, regardless of where they were before. Yep. They're going to be on one side of the pot, yep. and then the, the bottom four, historically, are going to be on the other side. doesn't matter who won I which. Think... No, and listen, they're just favoring the, the, the higher seats. Well, no, what they're they doing... Don't, they don't give any making... love to the lower seats, what... so I say keep the bracket. I think what they're doing is keeping it so like the actual good teams don't play each other in the first round, which I'm fine with. No, no, with. no, the, the first round is, is obsolete because they keep the one versus the two formula. But going forward, they just throw that out, and they, they put Real, Real Madrid, uh, Barcelona, Man U. Well, it also depends on the, because, like, two teams from the same country can't play each other in the first knockout and stuff like that. Yeah, There's yeah, a lot no, of weird no, rules no, like that. No, I understand all the rules. I'm just saying. No, uh, well, I'm just saying them out loud. I say you, they get what, rid of like, those you, I don't know why, though. Because why, when they redraw say... the teams, for the, they redraw after every round, yeah. they put the higher seeds into their own pot, 
regardless yeah. of how they played earlier in the tournament. So they're just favoring these teams so they'll get to the final. Give no, a little they... bit of love to the teams like Porto, uh, Galatasaray. Give some love to these teams that aren't going to get to the UEFA Champions League every year, like Man U and Barcelona. I, I'm completely confused. Uh, I I'll have to explain it to you. Because I've, some, seen, some I've people... seen the draw, but I don't. That, that doesn't sound like the way... Like I know the first the first draw for the, the group first stage draw is all, is all ones, it's yeah. the same way they do it in like the World Cup. But after that, it's the best teams on one side and historically on one side. How do they decide? Well, that doesn't make sense because who do they, how do they decide? Guys, how really? do they decide who's prime? I don't know if that's. I don't they think they that's have that. a coefficient every year that ranks every. Yeah, I know, but team. I don't think that's how they do it. No, it's it has something to do with that. I I don't. I want to see some of these smaller squads I think it's just go the, further. The ones are in one pot, and all the twos no. in the group are in another. Yeah, that's the first round of sixteen. Yeah, don't you, wouldn't you want to see a knockout stage bracket, not one of these stupid draw things? That they that's do? what, but it ends up being a bracket. Yeah, sort of. What are you talking about? I'm so confused right now. By right, the I'm just point gonna stop because I'm you so be, confused. You should be able to understand what I'm saying. It, is, it, does anyone in the room understand any of that? Other do you than understand? Andrew? Is there anyone else who, ha who, if you're sitting at home and you've never watched, and I've watched the UEFA Champions League draw the last three years, anyone at home understand what just happened? That's what I thought. <laughs> Mr. Augustus, Andrew Augustus, is in the room and he does understand what I'm saying. He's a soccer uh, soccer fan. Any non-soccer fans get what just happened. Well, you got to follow UEFA to understand that. Well, I do, and that you, what you, the way you explain it, it makes no sense. All right, let's move and on. There was, I don't understand what the advantage of one versus the other was. I, t I told you they favor the higher seeds. I want to see lower seeds go further. Every every sport favors the higher seed. So we get a home field advantage yeah. in every sport. Yeah, Next. UEFA does it worse. The greatest athlete of all time. So Warehouse, ESPN's coming out. They get all these stupid lists going on, you know? But one of their lists now, greatest athlete of all time. They broke it down to 16. Yep. Broke it down by sport. But we don't need to go through that bracket. Yeah. Who is your greatest athlete of all time? Uh, This is a tough question that I haven't thought about at all. Um, you want me to go? And then yeah, go it? ahead. All right, well, the greatest athlete of all time, you're looking at him. Not me. Yeah. Muhammad okay. Ali. Okay. The greatest. Boxer. I'll yep. tell you why he's the greatest. Completely revolutionized the heavyweight division. The heavyweight yep. division before was stiff guys, blocking punches, yep. not moving around at all. Muhammad Ali gets in the ring. He's ducking punches. He's moving. He's quick. Completely revolutionized yep. the heavyweight division. Not only that, he fought in the golden age of the heavyweight division. Joe Frazier, George Foreman. He had to beat Sonny Liston to get the belt. Yep. Youngest youngest heavyweight champion of all time. Uh, second youngest, my bad. Floyd Patterson, who he also beat, yep. was younger when he got the belt. And then Mike Tyson was 20 when he got it. So Mike Tyson beat that out first. But Muhammad Ali, my greatest southeat of all time. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll agree with Mo I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. Well, you can like, go Michael Jordan, you can go Tiger Woods, Roger Federer. Eh, I'll go Ali. I don't know. Tom Brady? No. Let's no? be real for a second. Uh, yeah, I'll go Ali. It's pretty good. That's it? Yeah, that's all no I got. No argument behind it? That's all I got for that one. I... But Ali should have retired earlier. Yeah, probably. No, probably after the Thrill in Manila, but... Do you ever th see the Thrill in Manila HBO doc? I think I've seen some of it. I haven't yeah, seen the whole it's, thing. It's really, it's really awesome, actually. I think. Thoughts on wrestling being ousted from the 2012 Summer Olympics? 2020. Yeah. 2012 already happened, but... That's all right. Um, wrestling out of, not next Olympics, the next one in 2016. After that, <laughs> alleged, they're in a pot with seven other sports, so they can technically get back in, Have but they're the probably not sports? going to. Uh, no, I don't Baseball know. Baseball slash other. softball, yep. COVID. Uh, roller sports. Yeah. Sport climbing. Yeah. Wushu, karate. A lot of these sports, yeah. I don't know. I think of like wushu. Yeah. What the heck is that? Well, you could have said when baseball, softball got booted the first time. Uh, I think a lot of people were in the same boat where obviously it'll get back in, and it it hasn't yet. I, so. I didn't think that. Well, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? You I want didn't me to say go, you, you want... did. I just said people. Okay. I did. Go ahead. Do you want me to go? Okay. Go I ahead. think I think go wrestling ahead. should stay in the Olympics. Why do they have to kick a, a sport out of the Olympics? Yeah. That's what I don't get. Yeah. And the sports that they were talking about was Taekwondo and modern pentathlon. Who does modern pentathlon? Who, who, uh, I don't know. who grows up doing modern pentathlon? Obviously Just, someone. Tons of people grow up wrestling. I, I'm not one of them. I don't know anything about wrestling. Yeah. But I think it should stay in the Olympics. There's a ton, tons of countries do wrestling. Yeah. And it's spread out, you know, every, well, not every country, but 
the, the metal count is spread across various countries. It's just not one dominating. Yep. Modern pentathlon, I just think they shouldn't have eliminated any sports. And then when you look at the sports that they're considering to get in, yep. like we just named off, it's like, why are these sports, why is wrestling getting grouped with these sports? Yep. So I don't understand it. I think they should keep it. Not only has it been around since like the 1896 Olympics, yep. the modern Olympics, yep. they just introduced women's wrestling. Yep. So it's like, all right, we got women's, women are coming up here. Yep. Uh, why are we getting rid of this now? I don't get it. Yeah, it's a good question. It's only missed one Olympic Games. Uh, one of the first sports in the Olympics was one of the primary sports. It's confusing and it's upsetting to see it eliminated from the Olympics. The question, yeah, like you really have to say, like you, like you asked, why do you have to get rid of a sport? And then why wrestling? What was the reasoning behind getting rid of wrestling? Because at the in wrestling, the pinnacle is the Olympics. It's the biggest, uh, biggest event you can win in rep, in yeah. in in the sport. Golf. You can win majors, the Masters, which is going into the Olympics. And I'm not saying golf shouldn't get in, because it's not an issue of what sport should be in, what sport shouldn't be in, that whole debate. But it's more or less. Plus, the world the world body for wrestling did an awful job. They were completely blindsided by, by it getting kicked out. Uh, I forget what sport it was that said it was on the verge a few years ago. Their governing body came in, made a protest before it got booted. It ended up staying in. Wrestling's world body, FILA, should have done a much better job making sure that it didn't get kicked out in the first place. And really, all you have to say is, we've been in the, in the Olympics since it was actually in Athens, Greece. So th there, you can't kick the original sport out. One, and I'm not saying it's the original sport. One of the original sports, though. It makes no sense to me. Absolutely no sense. Yeah, I, and I it's, a dollars, it's a dollars and cents thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Celtics better without Ronda? Season, season put on a, a good run here after Rajon Rondo's gone out for the season. Are they better without him? I think they are. Okay. And, and it's not a question of how good he is as a player because he's clearly probably the best player on the team. Yep. Clearly, probably. Two words I probably should yeah. use next to each other, but whatever. Um, but there's something different about this team now. It seems like everyone's on the same page. Yep. I think they're 8-1 and one since yeah. Rajon Rondo's yeah, been hurt. So it just it seems like Doc had trouble coaching him, and now that Rondo's not on the roster, well, not dressed, Doc has free will to do whatever he wants now. Yep. So it just really made the Celtics a little bit better. They're no, they're not going anywhere. Still, yep. we say that every yep. time there's yep. a Celtics topic. Yeah. But right now, better. Yeah, I heard I heard on the radio they've won 66 percent of their games without him, even when before this injury specifically, just missing for short spurts here and there. So. It kind of goes to show you they can win without him. There's been a lot of room, a lot of talk that he's kind of made the assist a selfish stat in the sense where he's got to be the one who gets that assist. And and just little stuff like that that you hear and the fact that when it sort of became his team a few years ago, he's let up on the defensive end and, and little things like that. He's kind of turned into a little bit of a prima donna, even though I know, as you said, the best, singularly talent-wise, the best player on the Celtics team, youth-wise, all that, probably the best, brightest future out of the bunch. But proof is in the pudding. If you're going to win 66% of your games without him, he can still get you to the playoffs in a regular season. So maybe the team is better without him. But as you mentioned, not going to win a championship with this roster. So yeah. So who cares? Yeah, exactly. NBA stinks. Pretty much. What All-Star Saturday event would you do? So All-Star Saturday yep. night is probably the best part. It's definitely the best part of All-Star weekend. Yep. There's plenty of events. You got shooting stars, which is you get, you know, you get a team up of a WNBA yep. player, a former NBA yep. legend, and an NBA player. You get the uh, point guard challenge. What's what's that called? The skills challenge. Point guard yeah, skills I challenge. Think, yeah. uh, three point shootout, slam dunk contest. Yeah. Uh, rookie sophomore challenge. I don't think they do horse anymore, but if you want to do horse, you yep. can throw that in there. What are you what are you doing? Uh, probably the three point contest is the most is one of the more interesting ones. The dunk contest I haven't watched in a few years, but when I did like four or five years back. It really wasn't that great. It's awful. So I'm going to go three-point contest. I think it's the most interesting. I think it would be the most fun to be in, the most intense compared to the dunk contest, which is kind of more of a fun, just kind of go out there and do whatever you want situation. There's not a lot of pressure. I feel like the three-point contest, you could get into it, get competitive. You want to knock down a bunch. You'd want to set records. So I'll go three-point contest. Yeah, I just want to say the slam dunk contest is awful. Yeah. The first dunk is like decent every year. First dunk decent, yep. and, you, and then everyone throws up a, a ten. Yep. It's like, all right, who are, who are these judges? What are we doing? This is a slam dunk contest. We don't care about it at all. And you're giving everyone tens. 
Yeah. So it's just, it, it has to come down to the fan vote, which yeah. is, uh, whatever. But uh, you know me, I'm a high energy guy. Yep. I like to run around a little bit. Yep. I like to dribble the basketball a little bit. Yep. I like to throw some passes behind the back a little bit. I'm doing the uh, the point guard skills challenge, you know? Okay. okay. Get out there, get the ball, okay. dish a pass out. You got to dish the the uh, chest pass. Yep. Then you go bounce. Yep. Then you go, you got to hit the free throw. Then you got to hit the three. Then you got to hit a layup. Then yep. you got to dribble dribble around those little NBA Jerry West things. Yep. You know what I'm talking yep. about? Yep. Yep. <laughs> just, a, just a lot of fun right there, I think. That's not a bad choice. Yep. Get get my first round score up there, so I get in the finals. Get in the finals, blow everybody away. Yeah. Well, it's, at that point, it's only like one opponent, so I'll blow them away. I want to. That, that would be fun to do, just to do. You know. Yeah. We do three point shootouts in the rec center, and it's yep. it's a pretty fun time. We gotta get this uh, this point guard skills yeah. challenge going. Could really get competitive with that. Yep. What breed of dog would you show at the dog shop? So the Westminster Dog Show, the 137th or something like that, yeah. just concluded at. MSG the other night. Banana Joe and Ap Apple Houser breed. I have I, I never heard of the know. breed before, yeah, but I it's from Attleboro, know. Mass. So it's a locally bred dog. Banana Joe was the. Are champ we really gonna get excited? I mean, the dog is from Attleboro, but who who cares? Like why not? It's Attleboro is just down the road. Get excited. It's, yeah, that's not something to get Go excited crazy. for. Go crazy. The dog is from Attleboro. It's not excited. Okay. What does that dog add to the community? Nothing. <laughs> meet the dog <laughs> oh, like, at, at the Attleboro Public Library. Meet, meet Banana Joe. Uh, it's That'll be great. Unbelievable. But we, we now have the question, what, dog, what kind of dog would you breed if you were a uh, dog show guy? I would go, um, it's like a, a Kiba or a Kiva or something like that. I don't even know what Akita? the name is. Yeah, Kita. The Japanese? My, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. My friend had one of those. Nicest looking dog I've ever seen. I would go with an Akita. What was your friend's dog's name? I don't know. I don't know. Or was it? I don't know. It Just kidding. All right, so if, if I'm a dog breeder, you know, I'm going working class. Screw these little toy dogs like, okay. like Banana Joe. Okay. Screw the uh, the terriers. Eh, terriers are sometimes cool. Yeah. But I'm going to the working class, you know? You get the Huskies in there. Okay. You get, you get okay. the Alaskan Malamutes in there. You get the Samoids in there. Okay. You get the St. Bernards, the Great Danes. All these dogs, these big dogs, actually do stuff. Yeah. So... Uh, if I had to do it, though, I, I'm going Bernie's Mountain Dog. Okay. Dog has a lot of hair on it, so you gotta, you got to get the brush out. You know, if I'm a yep. dog groomer, or not dog groomer, but if I do one of these best in show sort of deals, you know, you got to go all out for it, right? Yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah. Get yeah. The dog, you got to get the dog, give the dog the shower, you know. Yeah. Put, uh, put the hair dryer on the dog, brush yep. the dog up, clip its nails, I guess. Yeah. I guess that's what you do. And it's also great when the, the it's also great at the dog show. When the dogs do the laps and stuff, and yep. then the, the guy who, there's one guy who chooses the best in show. Yeah. And he goes up to the dog and, like, tests out all its, uh, I don't want to say parts, but, you know, he observes the yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the uh, the breeder, like, is feeding the dog a bone, yep. well, a treat, while the guy is looking at him. Yeah. I don't know. It's just great. So, and then, when it's over, he just points at the dog, and that's the winner. Yeah. He's like, ah, you're the winner. Here's this humongous ribbon. The ribbon was, like, three times the size of the <laughs> show. So I'm going. I'm going uh, Bernie's Mountain Dog. Right? All right. Those dogs are great. Yeah, solid. I don't know anyone who has them except some lady who walks her her Bernie's Mountain Dog while I'm driving to school. Oh, all right. Uh, so yeah, you no, see I, her occasionally. I don't even know what they look like really off the top of my They're head. They're black, so. brown, and white. Okay. More black than brown and white. Okay. That help you out? No. <laughs> <That's> all... <laughs> They're big. Yeah. They're I, the working class. That's all we got for you here today. Have a good Valentine's Day. If you're watching this on Valentine's Day, if you're not. Have a good whatever day you're watching this on. And we got to thank Sam Allen, Matt Furtado, Ryan Bentoncourt's back in the yep. house. Yep, blast from the past. Blast from the past. Um, Shannon Carlson, we got to thank for the centerpiece. Yes. Uh, and then uh, we'll thank Andrew Augustus for. Andrew Augustus gets a thank you because he understood my UEFA comment. Not on the merit of the actual. Understood because he knows what it's like before. The way you explained it. <laughs> I thought I explained it pretty solidly, but. Man, you was winning it. We got two cents right there. That's it. Tip your way.